Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. During the 2014 American Academy of Religion and Society of Biblical Literature Conference in San Diego, we brought together several of our Seminarium Elements authors to discuss their books. This is part two of our discussion and it features Kristen Johnson Largen discussing her book Interreligious Learning and Teaching, A Christian Rationale for a Transformative Praxis. So for me, part of the the genesis of of the book was, so I'm a a systematic theologian by training, but also I've done a lot of comparative theology. And and again, I teach at a Lutheran seminary. Uh, The vast majority of my students are Lutheran, actually. We're not not so ecumenical. Um, And the vast majority of them are also preparing for public ministry. And so I come at this with a really deep conviction that you cannot be um, a... a, (laughs) You cannot function well in public ministry today if you don't know something about other religious traditions. And and comparative theology, which is the discipline out of which I do that work, has what I think is a really great orientation, which is this idea that um, you don't just learn something about the religious other kind of for their sake. I mean, that's kind of the, the first easy baby step into why you would tell Christians, okay, we're going to have this course at your seminary education, not another Bible course or not another course on Aquinas or, you know, Augustine or whatever. Why do we even need to do this? Okay, for the for love of the neighbor and to not bear false witness. That's kind of the first little step for that, and that's for the sake of the other. But I, I, I want to push them further also and say, but the other reason is that God is at work. I mean, it's a Christian conviction that God is at work in all people and, and all things. And so we can learn something of God in these other relig- religious traditions, which then sort of pushes to the final piece to say, um, and therefore our own, tran- our own tradition can be transformed in these really positive ways. We actually have something to learn that can benefit us. Um, but it's not always an easy sell. <laughs> And it's I, I go in congregations and I do these presentations also and it's it's not because you know you get the kind of questions. Well, why isn't the Bible enough? Or you're relativizing Jesus. And and these are concerns that come out of deeply held religious convictions. So I, I don't want to minimize those and I want to take those seriously and I really want to honor those and, and allow people to, to express those, you know. But I also don't don't want them to stay there, um, because again, I think that especially, and it's it's. I mean, I think it's a it's an often a very generational difference. I mean, for for people who are above a certain age, they just never had any exposure or learned anything about any of these other religious traditions. Often, I mean, depending on where they are. Right? I'm in rural Pennsylvania, so. Um, but the younger people, they're just surrounded by this all the time. They don't even they don't even think twice about it. So I think, and we have increasing numbers of interreligious marriages. We have increasing number of conversions. You know, so how are you gonna gonna kind of deal with those things? And so for I try to um, so 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 what the book so the book in, in the first chapter, I just sort of lay out these kind of four real life situations: um, Christians doing yoga, uh, Christian satyrs. Um, the Quran burning that that pastor in Florida, you know, and so what do we what do we think about those? How do we think about those theologically? What kind of th- challenges do those raise for us, right? And then the second chapter talks about then really the kind of the rationale for doing this. And so for me, the second chapter is really the heart of it. And I talk about somehow navigating. I mean, at least for my students, come in, and they they don't they wouldn't articulate it this way, but they feel themselves pulled between. What I would call the kind of, you know, Scylla and Charybdis, just because I love that image, right? Love Greek mythology of the kind of fundamentalism on one side that, that basically the, I mean, not, not traditionally defined, but this kind of sense in which this Christianity is, is the religion that I'm going to study and work with and the rest of them. They're out there, they're fine out there, but they're, that doesn't have anything to do with me kind of thing. And that, that can come with bias or no bias. I mean, sometimes it actually comes with a kind of a, a more pejorative attitude, and sometimes it just comes with a kind of an indifference. And then on the other hand is the relativism then. So it's all the same. It doesn't matter what you practice. You can practice anything, right? And so how to navigate that in such a way that they feel that their own 
um, core claims about who Jesus is and what Jesus means for them and the work and the life of the church in the world are being honored and valued, but yet also that they have been given permission to engage these other religious traditions in ways that are not only building friendships, which is always a great thing, but again, also transformative for one's own sake. And so that's that's the kind of work I try to do um, with, with my students. Um, and so what... I, but I wanted to make sure that we had a little bit of time. I'd, I'd love to hear in terms of your own contexts. Are you doing any of, I mean, because the, if you're, you know, ATS assess, um, the ATS accreditation, right, they want to know how you're dealing with these kind of things. Um, and so I think we're, you know, more and more we're being called to draw on these. But like at Azusa and Fuller, what kind of? Uh, Fuller has done really well. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, just the, the, the full time faculty there, uh, building like a kind of. Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. So they have right. they've, been, they've enacted a world religions uh, course as part of an end process, an ending process, mm -hmm. for about eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. um, Fuller is, or a APU just is adding a religious studies major. Okay. Um, which is, it was a theology. It was a theology major. They had a oh, separate theology major than a separate Bible major. They have like three different majors, and now they're adding a religious mm -hmm. studies major. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how well integrated that is. That's interesting. So, so for the most part, most students aren't getting other world religions. Okay. Like, like, unless they're getting them through their hist world history classes. Okay. And I don't know how much like a theology or religious studies major. Yeah, would, yeah. Which it makes it, I mean, so I try to incorporate that uh, coming right. out of car kind of Oh, okay, so great. That was just part of my right, uh, uh, right, awareness. Right. Um, so I, I try to bring those in, and I'm increasingly trying to learn yeah. about how to do that. Yeah, because I mean, I think certainly, I mean, right at, at the base, I'm happy just for the world religions mm -hmm. exposure. Just learn something, right. you know that that's that's it's always good. But I, you know, I would want to kind of push beyond just having it siloed. Right? right, it's its own thing over here, right. like you were saying. And how do we actually integrate this? I mean, the way that I describe it in in another book is we often think about it in the Christian tradition like okay once you have the house built the doctrines firm every then we can sort of do the sort of decorating with some little you know but it doesn't affect the foundation right the foundation is set but how do we think about actually in as part of the, the dialogue is actually what forms the structure of the house right I mean that's that's often the challenge how do you all do it at, at Palmer? Well, it's open into the existing courses. I was trying to think of which ones, so you should keep changing the names of them. Oh, right. <laughs> um, to make them more palatable or something. But anyway, what used to be called church history. Oh. Called church and, uh, church and mission throughout time. Oh, that's like that. interesting. And in that foundational class, the students go to visit a mosque. They go oh, that's visit, great. Um, a synagogue. Yeah. Um, they may even go to visit a Sikh community. I'm yeah. Sure. Um, so they have that from the very beginning. They're experiencing um, other um, other religious expressions outside of Christianity. But they're also even before you get outside of Christianity, they get, um, they have to go visit a um, uh, a Christian community other than the one that is their own, okay. either from childhood or where mm -hmm. they are now. And, um, and then the other place where this um, is woven in, these experiences, um, is in um, church world mission. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. engagement with other religious um, traditions. And so those are the two that I can think of. And that's that it, great. It's not a separate class. It's just woven in. Yeah, yeah. I think in some ways that's the best. I mean, you know, the, the problem is then you always end up trying to do two things at once. That's how I feel in my theology classes. You know, so on the one hand, I'm trying to do this. Um, you know, lay, lay the we're teaching about a doctrine, for example, and then at the same time, I'm trying to do this sort of, and, and so it often for some of the students, it gets pretty overwhelming. It's a little bit of a um, compromise for the yeah. professor, but we found that when we offered a when we offered the class, you know, like other religions or yeah. know, engaging other religions, we didn't get we didn't get the buy-in. But when it was woven to a regular class, nobody has any. Oh, that's very any interesting. Choice. So in a sense, it's yeah. much more democratic. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and also, it guarantees every single um, student will have some exposure, and it is life-changing for yeah. students. And oh, it's yeah. exciting for them. Um, and, are, and they find they have quite an appreciation for having them forced to do this. Yeah, no, that's good. Leonard? Um, well, we have a world religions course, but I would say in some of the theology classes, 
try to weave in what I would call a Christian theology of religions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A Christian theological stance toward religions. Yeah, yeah. Is there one stance? How, I mean, how would you characterize that stance? Or is it just depending on the professor who's teaching the course? Uh, I think it depends on the professor. Our school, our school is uh, young in this process. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, well, that's great. Yeah, well, anyway, that's, um, I, I think it's, I mean, it, more and more, of course, you just, you have to do this work somehow, you know, and, and so, the, again, the book is designed to sort of help think about some, and then the third chapter is the kind of just some strategies about how, how you might go about that, but um, I'm always really excited because I do think students, you know, if you give them permission in, in seminary in particular, then they can go out and, and when this, I, I feel like we're sort of seeding the church in a really important way here. And then they can give their own people permission when they come to them and say, I have these questions, you know, and not think that it's wrong to even be asking like they've done something wrong. So, yeah. So thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening to the discussion with Kristen Johnson Largen. To view the show notes for this episode or to leave a comment, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash zero two two. Fortress Press Live is available via iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, and YouTube, so be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform. Until next time, this is your host, Sean Tabbitt, signing off.